Oh shoot, wait a minute guys. They're fooling around over there. <laughs> that's what I'm this. thinking that that's part of like. Yeah, and they're like you know, playing they're around, leaving. like yeah. throwing the grass. <laughs> Can you zoom in enough to see yeah. that on there? That's weird. Oh my god. It has a little red mark on its head. Yeah. The ones that are more brownish than grayish. Yeah. Can you take a picture of me, like, with that in the background? Yeah, yeah. Oh, with that camera? Oh, that's... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe that's better for... I'll take it with my camera, but let me... Right. Go, Johnny. Here's a disaster Johnny, about to happen. Yeah, wait. Stay on there, Brian. I'm going to take a picture of you. i got to take a picture of Emily, so... He's in Alaska with only one wet jacket. <laughs> you can go on the bench. I think I might have gotten bit on my head, actually. Can you spray some? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just look at her. I'm I'm videoing. <laughs> because in case you fall if in. you fall in, I want the prize for America's funniest oh. videos. So it's just whoever wants to, but this is a whole Isn't it like a three hundred yard bridge or something? Right. I don't want to do something that we get all sweaty. Yeah. Because we have to last till the next week. <laughs> Maybe didn't dry yet, but I feel like. That one's starting to dry. Yeah, I feel yeah, I like once. Yeah, I got it.
Uh, gotta talk to Eddie about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll lose you. Which is the school year here. I am a school teacher. I teach high school social studies at Monroe Catholic High School, right downtown Fairbanks. And this is my 15th year working out here. They cross the Yukon River, found the thinness of the world, beneath that old white mountain, a little southeast of the north. Climb and buried underground, and you have to understand the layers of material in the ground we're dealing with are not going to be up on the surface in that creek, it's going to be right down there at bedrock, underneath all the clean up. I want you to keep that number in your head. We'll come back to that 650,000 ounces. Now what happened was there were so many different... They were taking water off the Davidson Ditch, forcing it out to Giant at high pressure. Workers called pipers would hold onto the Giant they were operating, point it straight ahead, use that high pressure water to wash away the top layer of overburden that had been exposed to sunlight and was thawed. Bunkhouse right next to a dredge. This machine was definitely loud in operation. Nobody got any sleep. All these camps were located off of the gold bearing ground, up in the hills, and the men were trucked in to work their shifts. And I'll probably introduce herself, uh, but I will say this uh, before she does that. If you want to talk mining, if you want to know what it means. I picked up in this country decades ago. I started mining for gold here in the interior of Alaska back in 1978. And it is a real pleasure to be able to share with you our mining history and facts about this marvel of mechanical engineering, Gold Dredge 8. She was built in the Bethlehem Steel Shipyards in 1927 out in San a son named Jim, and it's Captain Jim Bigley that started this excursion in 1950. He really liked to build things too, like this dry dock we all walked across down here, which is kept afloat by leftover pieces of Trans-Alaska Pipeline. That's what those big gray tubes are running through the middle and the, the tube right track. And those bush wheels underneath that plane are a big part of what makes it work. They only have about six or seven pounds of pressure in them. So they're like big team. We'll give you a live shot on the screen, which you'll see up ahead of us by Discovery One. Our friend Steve Knatzer is in another Piper Super. Wow, right I'll give you a front row seat for a quick bush flying demonstration. Those of you on the oh, left side, please keep your seats if you would to share the view. And again, Steve will be on the monitor. As he moves into position and avoids all the peace. Oh my god. We're going to be very surprised when the upper is Three people got out of the plane. <laughs> Do you have a big lunch or everybody's keeping up, right? Okay, good. A child into the world when a plane is doing that. But that's oh how they get God. down to the surface very quickly in case there isn't okay. room for a nice gradual approach, sure sort of a corkscrew maneuver. But then he'll lay it out right above the surface of the water, feel his way back down there. Can't actually see the water at this point, but he can use the horizon. Kind of one foots the landing ah, a little bit, but this isn't good wow. so If you can walk away from it, it's a tent. And there's our friend Steve can answer in 2 4 Alpha down there. A 1951 Piper Super Cup in great shape. And we're going to visit with him for a Here he goes. Metal tubes in the frame with a fabric coating about like your bed sheets. Plus a coat of paint. That's it. 150 horse light combing engine.
one in 60 Alaskans is a licensed pilot. Including Captain but I still know when the skis go on the planes because I was born and raised in Fairbanks. I've been in Alaska my entire on the left because I promised you a look at Trailbreaker Kennels. Here it is. And we're going to stop for a little while, use this boat like a big four-story grandstand for you. While I miss introducing Susan, I do love being able to do the next best thing, and that's to introduce you to her eldest daughter, Tecla. Nine weeks old, and they're really starting to get their legs under them. We're having a lot of fun. Yeah, they're almost big as your young guests there, and uh, I'm wondering now, as young as they are able to do it like these guys, with yeah, really well, yeah. on the other side, and this teaches them that we're never going to ask right? them to go any farther or faster than they're capable of, and we'll always be there for them if things get tough. Yep, trust and be trusted, just like you said. And then, uh, once they sort of outgrow the yard... ...the trail. Behind them, we have the team dogs. Now, anyone in the middle of your team is called your team dog. And in a race, like the end of order, you call a cluster any mid-distance race, you have 16 dogs in your team. So you can imagine how you trail or rough, rocky terrain, they're going to be the dogs that keep you out of the ditch and keep you going down the trail with those lead dogs that stay down. Oh no, she didn't pee so before she went in the pool. Kennel going to join us at the village she, she we stop? Absolutely. Uh, I'll be down at the village in a little cabin close to the landing, and Laura will be down there as well. And we'll bring some dogs that you can get up close to. It used to be directly in front of us, has now migrated off to our left. You'll see some really tall spruce trees. That's where the main channel is today. It's got a good eight mile an hour current or more. If you were to see how swift that water... Followed them, and along with them, they brought the new food. 
so it's not my fault no. that I lost it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, this is Leap. This is my first sled dog. Um, but, and also please don't dangle your infants over the side of the fence. If I don't say it, somebody will tap it before. Um, and I can't always catch it. Yeah, they're really friendly dogs. They might jump up on the fence. I uh, just don't want anybody getting scratched. But the canine assistance that I do have today is long distance huskies. And then there's your freight style huskies. I'm Lucy. Yeah, these are cute. Look at this one. Put it on the list.
Oh, wait, wait. We don't communicate between another box so be careful. Can you imagine the discussions between the road commission who wanted a mining road and park service? Like through sections like this? Wow. And for those of you on the right side of the bus, your time will come. <laughs> Sorry. And as I said, we are. Two, it is two way.
Thinking he was facing yeah. that way, right? Yeah, well, let's see. You know what it is? There was a rock wall mm. on that side. It was a smaller creek, it was. Yeah. It wasn't here, but it's still, it's a cool picture. <laughs> that is, touch the it water. It might have been further down where it was more narrow. Yeah. That's okay. You know what? We found one of the spots, you know, yeah. and they are so different. Yeah, it's, it's hard to really. But this yeah, is well, really I mean, I'm telling you, like, up there, we might find it if we just go to the beaver or something Oh, yeah. Where is that? It's on the other side. All right, so we can do that. I think we can stop at the beaver one and then... Quarter to eleven at night. <laughs> A little chill. Now I might come. It's not moving, is it? What's the matter? Are you kidding? I can't. I got I thought I could. I just don't know how to do it. Okay. Alright, see you on the other side.
Yeah. Does she want me to hold her hand? I don't know. It's a little shaky. Work out.
Daddy does it back. Good job. Peter, right in your neck. Neck, neck, in the front. Internet, internet. Okay, okay. Okay, you're Very <laughs>
be on duty, you know, for the re return to the cruise ship tour. Amazing sight.
you know, for the re return to the cruise ship tour. of the water, feel his way back down there. Can't actually see the water at this point, but he can use the horizon. Kind of one foots the landing ah, a little bit, but this isn't gymnastics. Wow. If he can walk away from it, it's a 10. And there's our friend Steve Cadanzer in 2-4 Alpha down there. A 1951 Piper Super Cup in great shape. There we go. Where? I can't see. Well, here we are on the far side of the lake, and these guys are really pulling along. Pretty amazing that they're able to run like this. Oh, my God. All in all, weigh a total of 400 pounds. Now, the reason they're able to run so effortlessly is because every dog is taking on his fair share of the work. It's divided equally amongst the dogs. And so, this is what I do on every run. I take the dog out of the cub line, which is the line that runs from the back of the harness to the main. Behind. This looks like a great team with a great future. Alright, and then once they disappear into the woods again, the next place you'll see them is this trail right in the middle of the yard just to the left of the dog pen. So that's where you want to focus. Now while we wait, Tecla, what kind of dogs are these? Well, these guys are called the Alaskan Husky, and they are a pure breed in the sense of their abilities. They are long. Oh here they come now. Take a look. Right where we told you they'd be. I don't know, we'll roll come in. Yeah, okay, good. Got him stopped. Nice job. That's Nora Alloway out there on the sled. And uh, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get it. Get it. See, I'm getting it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot You're making me nervous. It's so weird that it does it like in these different ways, you know? Oh, you're recording it. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's oh, my like, God. Look at that boat. Yeah. Can I try to get one like uh, yeah, hold on, hold on. a picture? I can't even. Yeah, yeah dude, just turn that. <laughs> Any pointer? 